Bon Viveur by Norton and Wilson, because life is meant to be enjoyed. Hello everyone, welcome back to a very special episode of the program today. So it's one of my interviews and we've got a very, very special, I, I always say this, but this interview really is rather special because it is John Stephen, the man behind Gravitas Pour Homme and our new release, Bon Viveur. Hello, John. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Great to see you. I'm doing great. And how are things where you are in the Cotswolds? Very busy at the moment. Um, well, it's been busy all year, really. We've been, uh, uh, obviously, the retail side has been closed, but our factory has been flat out. Well, that, that's certainly good to hear. For viewers who don't know, John is based in the Cotswolds and he is the man behind the Cotswold Perfumery, which is not only a place which makes fantastic perfumes, but also somewhere where you can go and stay. Uh, and you can even go on perfumery courses, about which more later. So uh, we'll put some details about that, of course, in the description of the video. But John, it's extremely great to have you on the, the show here today. I know that you're not someone who, who is uh, spending most of his life on social media or Instagram or YouTube. You are very much, I think, a traditional perfumer. And I, I rather like that, actually. I rather respect that about you. But um, w one of the main reasons, of course, I've got you on the show is that uh, we're very lucky that you are the perfumer behind the two fragrances for our brand, Norton & Wilson, which are Gravitas Pour Homme and uh, Bon Viveur, the new release, both of which are, are absolutely superb, I think. And Gravitas Pour Homme got so many amazing reviews, which is... Uh, you know, largely thanks to you, really. If you're interested to order the fragrances, particularly the new one, Bon Viveur, we have a special pre-order running at the time that I upload this video. So go to nortonandwilson.com. That's the only place at the moment that you can get Bon Viveur. And the link is in the description or just Google it. That's the place to order if you're in the USA, UK, EU or Canada. You've got an incredible history, actually, in perfumery. For viewers who don't know, John has created many many fabulous perfumes I, I believe apparently the Cotswold perfumery goes back to 1966 is that right yeah that's when we started that's incredible well it, you must have been very young then but <laughs> I can't quite believe that that's absolutely phenomenal and uh, some of your your well-known releases include things like Check and Speaks number 88 I think that was a 1980 release so going way back and of course Oxford and Cambridge another modern classic i think that was 1994 and uh, amongst other things you also create uh, many of the perfumes for bodicea the victorious you've got your own brand the cotswold perfumery fragrances oberon is a really beautiful one and i think there's one called neroli isn't there yes which yeah. is a fine example of, of that kind of fragrance and of course the uh, you've created for the british royal family yeah um so after working with such illustrious people what was your sort of uh, reaction to realizing you were making a fragrance for someone called mr smelly on youtube <laughs> <laughs> well uh, it's a brief like any other so you have to take it take it seriously um and we, tr we try and match whatever the brief is or match the fragrance to whatever the brief is so okay it was a you know, it was a very interesting brief Okay, well, thank goodness for that. That's really good. Um, so, uh, of course, you've been very much been someone who's who's been involved in uh, perfume making long before uh, online selling and uh, online p content about perfume was a thing. And I think I'm right in saying that that's still not something you spend a great deal of your time looking at or, or watching. So uh, are you pretty much unaware of the world of the YouTube fragrance community? No, I, I obviously I'm aware of YouTube, but uh, it's, social media is not, uh, it's, it's a bit of a black art to me. Um, I prefer to work behind the scenes in, in, in the lab um, and leave that side to others because it's, it's not my forte. This is your area, Dan, not mine. All right, brilliant. So you, I take it you don't watch Jeremy Fragrance? No, I don't. Actually. Do you know who he is? <laughs> no. Brilliant. Okay. Well, our viewers will find that very amusing. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you ever get a spare moment, uh, if you type his name into your laptop, right. you, you prepare for okay. some okay. eye opening moments. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, on to the fragrances that you've created for us, which have, uh, have both absolutely thrilled me. So I'll, I'll talk about the most recent one. 
which is hopefully by the time viewers watch this available to pre-order or if you're watching it a bit later it should be just available to buy uh, that's called bon viveur uh, i'm going to i'm going to just quickly say the note listing uh, and it's the, the note listing we've got for this one is lime lemon orange mandarin bay basil and lemongrass in the top then we've got mid notes of british gin clove pepper and watermelon and in the base we've got cedar patchouli oak moss and haitian vetiver so when we went to you with the, the brief for this one we asked for a fresh zesty citrus fragrance with a something of a classic feel uh, and I, we maybe mentioned a few notes i think i really would have liked to have lime in there and we maybe mentioned the idea of a sort of the theme of British gin as we're a British brand. Um, that was kind of a, you know, it, not necessarily that we had to specifically have that exact smell, but the idea of a zesty, refreshing, happy drink type thing was in there too. Uh, and we mentioned a few sort of classic fragrances that I liked, I think, from the, the 60s, like Dior's Eau Sauvage and things that would put you in that kind of mood. But as ever, what we actually get in the end is, is largely in, in your hands because I, I wouldn't have a clue how to make this stuff. So how did you sort of, what was your approach to fulfilling our brief on this one? Well, obviously it was, it was in contrast to Gravitas, which was a fougere type. So this needed to be, uh, have, a, have a, a basic theme of a citrus top, a top. And that was quite a high proportion of it. Now there are some, uh, some technical difficulties in creating a fragrance with too many citrus notes um, for, for safety reasons. You have to be, be careful of that. So we're sort of pushing the, pushing the limits on that side, uh, but still trying to get the citrus hit when you first, in the, in the first opening. Um, it ended up being quite a complex fragrance, uh, probably more complex than I initially uh, am envisaged. Complexity isn't a good thing in, in itself, but sometimes, you know, the additions of some very small amounts can make a, a big difference to the final fragrance. And spent quite a long time tweaking it, but um, got a fragrance which I think is, hopefully hits the, the, the brief, is popular with the sort of, you know, clientele that you're going to have, which is um, fa fairly traditional market and yet you know wanting something a bit different so um, we'll have to see well let's let's hope that it, it's appreciating goes well yeah uh, well i'm certainly loving it and yeah i think y y your description is absolutely great there and uh, yeah that's exactly what we wanted and the, the thing is that it, it certainly is something a little bit different and uh, it's it, it, whilst fulfilling the brief when one writes these things down and imagines them the, one still never really has any idea until that first sniff of the fragrance of exactly how it's going to smell so even though i was responsible for some of the initial idea of the the type of thing I still had that that wonderful experience of smelling it uh, as a, as a sort of surprise when I first smelled it, but a very very pleasant one. And as you say, it's it's certainly quite complex. Um, it's you know there's a lot going on. Yes, there's there's a lovely citrusy fresh opening. I, I love it when there's a lot of different citruses in there working in perfect harmony. Uh, but then we've got the spices in the middle. The watermelon thing is kind of a, a fun note that we don't always actually I'll, I'll just touch on that because some people may be intrigued by that watermelon is not a note you hear in every fragrance so what was what was the thinking behind including that one well um it citrus notes go very well with green notes now this there's, there's there's quite a range of green notes that are available today um, and watermelon is that has got that greenness to it that um, that blends very well with the citrus top. Um, it's a middle note though, so it, as the top notes disappear, it uh, blends into the middle, the green middle, and uh, I, I think it worked quite well in that fragrance. Yeah, I think uh, that's right, and you you very much. Uh, are saying that the watermelon thing is a kind of a, a green note because some of our viewers here will be familiar that uh, there's a fragrance called Millicene Imperial by Creed which is supposedly famously has people describe it as, as sort of a, having a watermelon-esque vibe but this this really isn't anything very much like that I don't think so it, it rather than 
a very juicy fruity note we're thinking of a, a greenness which complements the zesty citrus is that right with the watermelon so the fruity the fruitiness is really uh, the restricted to citrus because that was really what the fragrance was about mm. and a green a green note doesn't have to be juicy right it gives a freshness and a um and a naturalness to the to the uh, to the fragrance okay superb uh, absolutely fantastic so uh, yeah last thing on this fragrance and uh, which i hope many of our viewers will soon be able to experience for themselves uh lovely to see in the base there we've got real i think we've got real haitian vetiver haven't we and is is that especially an especially good type of vetiver right it, it's the best <laughs> haitian vetiver is lovely um the only problem with Haitian vetiver is is the supply of it because sometimes you know you get uh, terrible weather you get tornadoes ripping through you get political problems there uh, all sorts of issues but when it's available it is definitely the best right well uh, i'm very happy that we've got that in there and uh, some real classic bakes base notes in there uh and just the, the last little thing on bon viveur then with many of the fragrances we have oak moss listed as a note of course you're very limited in the proportion of the real thing that you can use now legally uh but is 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 there some other notes i think i've seen tree moss and the other other things that can be put in to replicate the smell of oak moss or is it just a, a tiny dose of the real thing? How does that work? Unfortunately, there, there is no real alternative to, to oak moss. And if you put in tree moss, it has to be treated as if it was oak moss. So the, the more tree moss you put in, the less oak moss you can put in. Um, it is a beautiful material and it's tragic that it is limited the way it is, but you know we're, we're stuck with that. So we have to deal with it. Um, the good side is that it does have quite a, a higher yield. So in fact, uh, a little goes a long way and you, you can put a small amount in and it really does have the effect, especially later on. Because once uh, oak moss has been on your skin for you know three or four hours, mm. that's when it, it really comes to its best and you can appreciate the, the odour. But uh, yes, it's one of those things that we miss tragically as a perfume. We can't, we can't use as much as we used to be able to. Okay, brilliant. So it's just a, it's just a small amount within the rules, uh, and but it is, it's, there's nothing you can really do to to make uh, no. an alternative. But that's good to hear that you think you know it's, it still has enough of a, a yield that it, it can still play a beneficial role. But uh, sadly, the powerhouses of the uh, 80s and 90s uh, are. Um, um, uh, destined to the the history books sadly okay well th fantastic fragrance we are really really thrilled with it and um we'll be marketing it and doing lots of uh, as you say you leave the, the silliness to me online to promote it in my top hat and uh walking cane as a bon viveur of course a bon viveur viewers is somebody who enjoys the finer things in life and we we definitely think this fragrance should be one of them we'll just spend a, a shorter amount of time perhaps on gravitas pour on the first one that you did for us uh which is of course an aromatic fougere we were absolutely blown away with you know I gave you the idea of the kind of thing we wanted to do and I, I get the feeling that, that it was a very comfortable uh, genre of fragrance for you to, to make. It, it wasn't uh, particularly difficult for you to make a really good aromatic fuji. I get the feeling that you appreciate that kind of perfume. Uh, I'll just whiz through the note listing. So you gave us bergamot, mandarin and lavender in the top. Then we had cardamom, coriander and pepper in the middle. Again, patchouli in the base, along with ambergris, oak moss, and vanilla. And so what was your process in coming up with that one? Well, there's, there's always an issue with fougere because this uh, oak moss lavender blend, uh, again, was restricted with the oak moss. So you have to try and use every trick in the book to get that kind of a note um, without using the oak moss. Obviously, use as much as you possibly can up to the limit, but... Um, you can't go any further now so hopefully we've achieved the best that we can given the limitations on sort of legislative limit limitations and um, th there's no doubt that fougere is is a classic you know men's fragrance it, it always has been it always will be it's just associated with that uh, group of fragrances and it's almost timeless i mean the first few fougere came out in 
1882 and we've been going strong ever since you know so um no it's a uh, it, it is a very popular fragrance with men absolutely yeah a true classic and uh i i, I think i get the, the feeling that you you do feel a little bit with some of the restrictions now that the the truest form of the the classic fougere is a little difficult to keep making but what we've got here i guess is a little bit of a neo fougere because we've got some sweetness in there and quite a lot of spices so uh, i definitely feel that you know if i compare it to some of the old very sort of green mossy fougeres i've got some old vintage designer fragrances it's, it's quite different to those uh, but with the the addition of the nice vanilla and some of the spices in there uh, we, we've created, or well, I should say really, you've created something a little bit more modern and uh, a little different, not not just a complete uh, textbook, it, it, Fougere Royale style fragrance. Would that be sort of fair to say? Yeah, um, and of course you, you can't do those fragrances anymore, but so uh, yes, it has, you have to use uh, the, uh, there are quite, quite a few modern tricks that you can use if you like, but um, yeah, we, we, we try and make a twist on that that's going to bring it up to date. Well, it seems that we, we definitely succeeded there because we've, we've had really, really nice reviews from people uh, and uh, it's just been very, very gratifying indeed. So thank you so much for, for providing the magic, really. It's, it's been an absolute thrill and I feel very lucky to have been the, the person presenting this. But uh, for at last, people can see the person who actually created both these fantastic perfumes. So thank you so much. Now, I'll just uh, get on to the, the stuff about you now, because uh, you've got a fantastic history in perfumery. And the Cotswold Perfumery, where you are now, I've, I've visited once in an incredibly picturesque part of, of the UK, guys. It's, it's a real, uh, you know, ch chocolate box type place, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely beautiful where you are. And that's somewhere where people not only can visit your shop and buy the products and perfumes that you sell, but I think it's very popular for people Firstly, perhaps just to go and stay for a holiday, but also to go and, and book a course where they can learn about perfumes with you. Is that right? Yep. We do uh, courses here at different levels. Um, uh, we do it right up to commercial level. So you know, in, that would be something like you know, getting up to a week, six, six days. And, um, and by the time you leave level two, you can sign off your own IFRA state certificates, you can write your own allergen reports, you can, you know, do your own labels for the backs of bottles and things. And um, we've got quite a list of fragrances that have been launched, um, you know, through from students. So uh, it's uh, quite an intensive few days. You need a good good night's sleep each night, but um, we've got some uh, quite comfortable accommodation as well that we can put people up with, and uh, you know they're proving very popular. Okay, yeah, that that looks absolutely fantastic. I, I did see some shots of the accommodation; it, it looks quite uh, comfortable indeed. Uh, it, yeah, really nice place to stay, but uh, it, it does seem that the courses you run there are not necessarily just dabbling around a little bit of fun. You've actually you've had people who are now going on to, to set up their own brands and things, and it's, it's, you know, really serious stuff that they can get out of these courses, right? Oh, yes, we've got quite a list of them. Fantastic. Okay, so if anybody's interested in that, there's links down below. And the, I do do recommend the, the perfumes from your own brand, Cotswold Perfumery uh, Oberon, I think, is a really, really nice hardly mentioned in our on youtube and everything like that but what one that i think is a really good one to check out uh from john stephen if you like perhaps things like our uh, gravitas and the kind of things i often like on the channel well worth checking that one out so uh just briefly john i i can't let you go without trying to get a few tidbits from you about your your life in perfumery because uh, it's a, a great long career that you've had and i'll just rewind if i may to the beginning and how did you actually get into perfumes and uh, how and at what age did you become uh, an actual trained perfumer how did that happen back then uh well it was a family business initially uh, that failed uh, right. my, my father started it uh and then it was resurrected a few years later um and my mother was uh, running the running the perfumery i was making the fragrances and um basically because she needed an income um and i sort of was following my own career but when she died this is in the 70s um that's when i decided to take over and right. fairly, fairly soon realized then you can't actually 
do it seriously without selling for your fragrances outside because you've got so many different materials you need to keep all the wheels turning and things so we started to make it for other other uh, perfumeries and um, those markets initially were UK, uh, Germany, France, Italy. Um, but more recently, in the last sort of 10 or 15 years, it's, it's changed a lot. It's moved uh, really to the Middle East and Russia. These are the big markets where people you know, appreciate niche fragrances, premium fragrances. And um, we, yeah, we're quite experienced now at making Arab fragrances particularly because you know, they they are probably better known in in the Middle East than we are in the UK, um, and yes, probably eighty percent goes to uh, Middle East and Russia. Right. Okay. Now nowadays, that's mainly where your you, your market is. That's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, and most recently, India. But of course, uh, you know, in the present climate, we've got serious problems there now. But mm. India, India is a very promising market too. That's interesting. Yeah, let, let's hope things improve there. Just going back a little bit then, we, we've got the, the check and speak one that people may have heard of from, from 1980. Uh, I, 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 but I keep just referring to these ones. Are there any others from, from that sort of era that people may have heard of that you could maybe name drop for us? And any other fragrance brands you created for back in the, the 70s, 80s, 90s? From, from the 70s and 80s, um, well, some some of those some of those companies have gone now, but uh, we used to make for um, um, for an Italian um, company. We've made for um, um, Fragonard in France. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. we made two fragrances there. We made um, Eclat and uh, Elixir. They're still going, of course. That that company's um, um, we've made for. Some some people I can't mention because we're you know we're not we're sure. not to say uh, you, you know about the Bodicea ones. Yep. Um, there's uh, Captain Fawcett that mm -hmm. uh, we've done quite a lot of work for. Oh that's, yep. That's been quite successful, or very successful recently. Um, Is that the house that's got a fragrance called Booze and Backy or something? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. We made that. That's you. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I heard really good things about that one. I've not tried it yet. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that, I, that's, I didn't expect that. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Lovely. That's there. Well, there, there you go. So the, the, you're very, very busy and we're just glad to be part of that roster. And uh, now lastly, the, the Royal, Fa I, of course, maybe you can't comment too much, but it, it must have been rather, uh, interesting and exciting to create fragrances for the royal family without giving anything away that you're not allowed to can you just give us a little bit of a, a hint about how that came about and what what, what kind of brief you got from the royals yeah. um well we were contacted by uh by the, the queen's housekeeper at the time and uh, said that the queen wanted a, a personal fragrance for uh herself and the queen mother at the time and also um uh, a room fragrance for the uh, for the for the drawers in Windsor Castle, of which there are many that uh, contain the linen and things like that, and um, they wanted a fragrance to go in there. The fragrance was um, for the Queen. It was um, um, a white floral, so that was jasmine, lily, gardenia. Yeah, uh, made that for her. She liked that, uh, and then she wanted another one made for the Duke of Edinburgh because he liked lime. Um, so we made one called Edwardian Lime for him. Um, then uh, one for Commander Tim Lawrence, and then for Prince Philip, and they all started want wanting one there for themselves. Oh, uh, so there were quite a few in the end. <laughs> That is superb. Okay, and those kind of things, obviously, they they're not um, commercially released. They are literally just bespoke fragrances. They were bespoke fragrances for them, yes. All right. So when we hear houses uh, like Creed claim that their fragrances were created in this way for for royalty back, you know, many years ago. I'm not disputing that, but here we, we have a real case. It really did happen. So that's a, a fantastic uh, story. And, uh, you know, um, who would have thought that from, from the royal family uh, you, you would sink so low as to create for Mr. Smelly too. But uh, I'm very grateful that you did. 
<laughs> on that note, John, I think I, I'm going to leave it there. It's been, I'm hugely grateful. We actually shot this on a bank holiday Monday, and uh, I know you're exceedingly busy. So giving your time up for this was much appreciated. It's been really great to, to have you on the show. I think our viewers will be really happy to see who you are and hear your words of wisdom. So thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Okay, Bye. viewers. Guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. And remember, whatever you're doing in life, Let's project. Bon viveur by Norton and Wilson, because life is meant to be enjoyed.